Hi there. In this video, I will tell you how to write a program that you can launch as a process and avoid it being detected in plain sight. What I mean to say is that you could just launch a program and uh, nobody would find out that this program is running um, directly, right? How do you do that on Linux? Well, consider this. I have a program written in C. I've compiled it. I will show you the source code for that program in a while, but uh, the program binary is named Trojan, right? So I have a program called Trojan in here. Which you can which you can see. When I run when I run this program, this creates a daemon which resides in memory. It doesn't do anything dangerous. It's just a simple program that just is gonna sleep for like thousand seconds and exit. But for now, but you will not be able to find what it's doing. Maybe I can do something very malicious like monitoring stuff or watching over others or stealing data. But then when I launch this, ideally as a systems administrator, we'd expect to find this as a process in memory, right? When you do that, when you do a PSAX, you would expect to see this program here. But are you able to notice? Are you able to find this program here? I don't see any program with the name Trojan being listed, right? So you can just see I just launched the program as Trojan. So it should be that process named as Trojan, right? But let's just find out if you just go and scroll up in the output of PS command, you'll find all kinds of programs. You have Google Chrome, my OBS Studio manager running, OBS Studio running, and uh, a lot of artifacts of Gnome desktop and uh, the system D related daemons and all of the stuff running, right? But this program that I launched, Trojan, will not be listed in here. Even if you want to verify that, I can actually do a PSAX pipe grep for Trojan? Nope. Or maybe you might say, oh, how about running htop or top command? Okay, let's go and do that. Let's run htop. Hmm. You won't find the program with the name Trojan even in this listing. Yeah, you'll find a lot of processes, but uh, I'm just scrolling up too quick, but uh, I can guarantee you that you'll not be able to find Trojan. Now, how is it being done? And how do I detect it? First, let me tell you how it is, how you can detect it. That's very important. Um, it's very easy to hide a program with a different name than the actual program name itself. Let me show you something interesting here. When you look at PSAX, the Trojan is just hidden in the screen. Can you figure out which one is it? Well, let's go and check it up. Check up here. Uh, look at all these things that with the, the ones in square brackets, these are all kernel threads. You'll see a lot of K-workers running here. You can see a lot of K-workers. These K-workers are kernel's own thread pool. So it just creates these threads dynamically and the threads are managed by the kernel work queue subsystem or we call them as concurrency managed work queues. But then uh, these get created on demand and also they are eventually they exit when they are no longer required, right? The Trojan that I wrote renamed its name into one of these K-workers. Now we got a hint. Hmm, let's see. If you look at all these K-workers, you'll see a capital I, and uh, some of them has a capital S with sometimes a less than sign, but the one that I've written as a Trojan, you can see it's got a small S here. This is a Trojan. It looks like a K-worker. Looks like a normal kernel thread, right? So at a certain glance, you'll not be able to find out. Now, how do I verify this? Well, when you look at PS command, whatever output you see here, you shouldn't be trusting this because this can be changed by programs the way they want. Well, uh, the legitimate use case for this is there are certain processes that wants to quickly show up their status on what they're doing. I've seen this being done by MySQL database, by SendMail and many other uh, services where they say listing for incoming connections or they, they print that kind of message. So you'll see a status. So how do they do that? They actually modify their command arguments, right? And that's what this Trojan has done. Um, in fact, one sure short way to find out whether the program that I've run is a Trojan or not, in this case, right? Because I hidden this as an existing K-worker. One way to find out is, if I do a PS minus EO, PID, comma, PPID, comma, remember the EO switch. E is all, O is to select the output columns of your choosing. So in this case, I'm just interested in the process ID, the parent process ID, 
and the program arguments. And when I run it this way, this prints a PID of every single process. It also prints the parent process ID. You should know one thing that every kernel thread, anything that's called a K thread or a kernel thread, right? Their PPIDs will be two, all of them. Because threads have a boss worker kind of a model. They don't have a hierarchy. They have a boss worker model. The boss thread is K thread D. That's PID number two. And every other K threads are children of the boss thread. I mean, they are, that the PPID is always set to K thread, right? But uh, the Trojan that I created, you can see that it shows itself as a K worker, seemingly a kernel thread. I also made sure it looks like other k workers like you can see k workers slash small u number colon number this will make it totally unsuspecting for an occasional system administrator or occasional user but then you can see that the ppid of this is how it reveals it out right so you can see it shows uh 1143 now you might ask me how do okay i know there's a trojan sitting there but uh, how do i know what's the name of the real program binary who is hiding it who is hiding in that name called k worker how do i find that out well, the ps command will print the program arguments that you see here. I will show you the C file which I modified to for the Trojan to make this work. It's a simple C program which uses some of the Unix related calls. For example, one of them is the daemon. Daemon is the BSD library API which is available via unicd.h which allows you to fork off a child process parent exits and the zero zero indicates um, do I need to not change the current working directory or do I need to not uh, close the first three file descriptors so zero zero means that close all the first three file descriptors and change the root directory to change the current working directory to root that's what this means right so normally when you say daemon of zero zero it forks off a child and the child process the std, std in std out sdrr all of these are closed the first three file descriptors are closed and uh, the process actually ch changes to the root directory. Right? It does not cling on to the current working directory as such. And uh, this child process runs in the background. And after that is what is interesting. You can see the next line is a standard um, string API where I'm using strcpy to rv of zero. Wow. You can actually write to argv of zero. You can use that destination and you can put whatever string you want. As long as you don't overflow the buffer, you're okay. I guess the rv vector is about 64 kilobyte to 128 kilobyte i need to confirm that it's around that number so before you overflow it's going to be a quite you have to write a really really large string to overflow that but then in this case yeah i just wrote k worker there this is how i'm hiding so you can see it's shown up as i just hard coded as k worker slash u9 colon 4. these are unbounded k workers which are very very dynamic they come up and they go out very quickly so it's very is difficult to say whether there's a legitimate k worker or not you have all these K workers running in the kernel, right? Anyways, and I put a sleep of thousand seconds. It doesn't do anything, but you can actually do something more dangerous in here where you might be snooping through activities on the system or anything, maybe doing some number crunching, which is um, like, you know, doing something like, you know, crypto mining, let's say. So all these things can be done in here, right? So anyways, so I'm not doing anything, but I'm just uh, put a sleep of thousand and just exited. But what really happened is the program's name now as per the PSAS, PS commands and many of the process monitoring tools, the name is now shown up as kworker slash u9 colon 4, right? That's how you see it. Now, how do you really find out the program name in reality? Well, uh, other than what the program advertises itself as. Well, if you do a PSAX here, you can see all these processes, right? Um, a whole lot of them. Um, when it comes to kernel threads, the kernel threads are nothing but separate tasks created by the kernel for concurrency management, managing things concurrently and running things in parallel in SMP architecture. That's what kthreads main work is. So they don't correspond to a program binary on disk. They are part of the kernel, right? But however, if you look at these things like, you know, OPT slash Google slash Chrome, or if you see systemd user work, so all of these correspond to some user space binary programs, which are being launched as a process. In order to identify what program binaries correspond to these processes, you can actually use this trick. You can actually do a, you could do a read link, for example, and say slash proc slash zero to nine star. 
This is a wildcard expansion or shell globbing expansion, which will expand to all folders or files starting with a number. Apparently in the slash proc, all entries that start with number are generally folders representing the processes, right? And under that folder, I'm interested in EXE. Read link will basically read a symlink, read the contents of symlink. EXE is a symlink which pointed the executable binary that is responsible for the process. So it's just going to read that. From here, you can find out all the program binaries in here. If my Trojan is still alive, you'll be able to find it out. Yeah, you can see this right here. Yeah, if you want to make it more exotic, where you want to print the process ID and this, a little bit of shell work is shell uh, script is required. I'll write a one liner, for example, a long one liner, but you can make it a shell script. Uh, you could actually do a. Maybe I can write a pod. It's easy to write a pod. Okay, so for p in slash proc slash zero to nine. do just type maybe i'll use printf this time because i want to format it nicely i can just use a percentage 10d hyphen percentage s followed by uh dollar of base name quality we'll just print the base name without the path only the last component of the path is what is extracted by wasting. So you get only the number. The PID is the number, right? You don't you want only this number that expanded without that slash proc prefix. All these are just ornamental. You can also make it more simpler. So I'll just put it this way. Followed by I'll use a dollar off read link dollar p slash exe. I'm using dollar parenthesis for command expansion. And the reason why I'm doing that, not backticks, is you can nest it nicely with dollar p and so on inside. It's very easy to do that. And uh, once you do, once you have, once I'm done, uh, I guess this should work. All right, we're done here. Oops. Okay, small problem. I forgot a slash in at the end. Printf requires a slash in at the end, so to make it more intuitive, more readable. Run this. For all the K workers, there are no program binaries in associated. So you will see a hyphen at the end with a space and uh, nothing else, right? We can filter that out by just feeding this output to rep minus V. Uh, look for anything that ends with a space. Ignore all the lines that end with a space, right? So most program binaries don't end with a space. That's the assumption. So now we have a list of processes and the corresponding program binaries. This way, if at all you have a scenario where maybe you have some processes which are listed, which are listed with some arbitrary name, so you want to find out which program binary is corresponding to, it becomes very confusing. This way you can get to know all the program binaries that are being launched as a process in memory. You can see this right here. And from this, you can identify our Trojan still staying alive here. Actually, it's sleeping for a thousand seconds. It's going to take a long time for it to exit, but I identified this. And now you can know the process and just, you know, what to do. Kill it, right? Uh, I also found out that uh, PS command might not be able to do this, but uh, when I try with pgrep, just see this, pgrep. If you suspect there's a program by some name that might be hidden, hidden as some process, right? So it's pgrep. And if I just do a Trojan, you get the same PID here. So through pgrep also, you can actually find out this particular information. If you know the name of the program, you can use pgrep and program name. Uh, it looks at the binary name rather than what that binary advertises itself as. If a program binary has a habit of changing its RB of zero, you can still use pgrep to identify that program by the binary name by using pgrep command. But uh, with ps command, it can be a little bit of a challenge. But however, if you know how to manage the proc file system, you can always identify the processes Every you can walk through every single process and find out their executable binary corresponding to that process. And from there, you can put all your filters and rules and extract them the way you want. And once you identify this, you found out this particular program looks a little suspicious in this case. And then, as you know, you could just kill it.
So one thing you learn is in Linux is that, yeah, you need to know more about the proc file system better. So you get better leverage in managing a lot of things. And uh, this is a small example to show how knowing more about proc file system gets you to find out programs which are hidden like these, right? Hope I hope you found this video useful. Yeah, I hope to meet you in another one. Thanks. Uh, if you do have any questions or doubts in relation to processes or files or program boundaries in general, you can always post on comments. I will answer them when I have time. Thank you very much. Hope to meet you in the next video.